Greetings and salutations, everybody, and surprise, because who the fuck knew we were going to do another episode this week? But, you know, the companies, game companies, they were like, you know what, we're going to release all the news before E3 and get everybody hyped up and just ruin the plans of the Glitch State Gaming Podcast to, you know, skip a Monday and do a live show. But hey, we're here, we're ready to talk about <laughs> games, and I'm joined by the one, the only, I can't think of anything to joke about right now, Israel Pacheco. Yeah, I can't think of anything either. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I'm also pre- drinking at the moment. So oh, okay. Probably, Maybe pre-release. This is be a fun podcast. Pre, Pre-E3 pre Izzy or something, because man, we were just yeah. talking about it. They're showing everything. Uh-huh. Before E3, we just hopped on the PlayStation blog and they already got the Gran Turismo Sport E3 trailer. I'm like, geez, yeah. what are you doing? Like, you must have something huge at the press conference, or there's going to be a lot of overlap, or mm-hmm. yeah, well, a little I, bit I, of both. Yeah, I went on to the blog to grab a couple of news stories, and I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight news stories from the blog, and mm-hmm. two from IGN. So. Needless to say, we're not really going to have a topic of the week for this episode. Yeah. We are. We already did our topic of the week for this week. Uh, so yeah, we got a bunch of news, though we are going to do a little bit of the been playing section. So, since the last time we recorded, Izzy, what have you been playing? Anything? Nothing? I've been playing Mirror's Edge. I don't think I spoke about that on the last podcast, did I? No, because it wasn't, it wasn't out yet. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't out yet. Um, it's just because the way we're recording these is kind of unusual, so I'm kind mm. of out of whack. But yeah. Uh, yeah, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, I was really enjoying it at first, and now it's kind of dragging. Oh. Um, I keep hopping back in. I like the design of the world, like aesthetically, um, the gameplays you know fantastic when it comes to the running and stuff the combat is still kind of wonky which is weird because the original mirror's edge came out in 2009 and you would have thought by now they would have kind of figured out first person combat improvements Mm -hmm. Uh, it feels very similar with some slight and you know tweaks i haven't gotten all the upgrade trees and all that yet but in terms of where i'm at in the game it feels very similar um, and the story's really mediocre. Like, mm-hmm. um, I was reading, you know, and watching a lot of reviews, and that seemed to be a major complaint that the story was really a letdown. People were complaining about the open world structure and how how empty the world is, and that doesn't really bother me because that's how the original game was. That's yeah. like the design, and you know, of the world itself. It's very sterile. Mm-hmm. So I really like the look of it, um, but it. The story's like really just there. Like it, it's confusing and it's kind of disjointed between the different mission structures. I can't tell you like anybody's name because I always wow. <laughs> forget the name of the kid. <laughs> it's it's just not memorable. It's very generic. It's not well paced. Mm-hmm. It's not well told. Maybe like the introduction portion, but then after that, kind of loses its way. Especially after playing something like Uncharted Four, that was so well structured. And the storytelling, you know, is top notch. This kind of really leaves you wanting more. Um, I'm just happy we got another one. I'll, I'll see how I feel at the end of the game. I'm probably somewhere around the two to three hour mark. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm just kind of, kind of let down by it, to be honest. That's a shame. It really is. Yeah, like it. It's not bad per se, but it's would you it's say like not great. it's best to wait for like a price drop onto it? Yeah, I'd say I I picked it up because I wanted to support it because mm-hmm. the original one we saw how long it took to get another game in the franchise, and this isn't even a sequel. This is a prequel, mm-hmm. which is confusing in itself. I don't know. There's just a lot of head scratching decisions that they did with this game. Like you, you thought they would have improved more things. But when when you're right in the action and like you're running and then jumping off walls and, and things like that, uh, the wall runs and all that. When you're in that and then you're like in a section that's like a, you have to really figure out how to, you know, traverse the environment. That's mm-hmm. still awesome. But like the hand to hand combat can be wonky at times, and the story, like I said, is just. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that's pretty much it. That's all I've been playing this week. Right on. 
Uh, I've got a few things. Uh, first, I finished up Tearaway Unfolded on the PlayStation 4. Oh, nice. Love that game. It's so good. Uh, I want to say that I think I preferred the Vita version more, but I, I still had a fantastic experience with it and quite happy that I finished it. And the other major thing I've been playing is several things because I picked up a three-month subscription to PlayStation Now. Uh, they dropped the price down to $29.99, I think, for a limited time. So I said, what the hell? I got $15 in my PSN wallet. Just a little yeah. bit more. won't hurt. And I started going through some of the games. And this is where things get fun because, you know, there, there's a lot of great games on there, but being the person that I am and the trophy hunter that I am, I started looking at the, uh, let's say, crappier games on the list. So, what I've played thus far on PlayStation Now. Sonic 4 Episode 1. Mm -hmm. uh, I played through a couple of stages. Ran pretty well. That was basically the test to see like how well the games run now. And Since I last played it with God of War, it seems like the service has gotten a lot better. Things have improved quite a bit for uh, feedback-wise. So, yeah. Yeah, even moving forward into the other games that I have here, things are running, I want to say, perfectly well, or at least they were on my end so far. The next game I played, Jeopardy. I decided to <laughs> load that up and play a game. I played one game of Jeopardy. I got 19 trophies. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How long was the game? Was it uh, quick? Uh, I was about half an hour, I think, or less. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I might have cheated a little bit for Double Jeopardy and Final Jeopardy just to boost up my score, but I was basically watching the credits, and it was like trophy pop after pop after pop. It was oh, jeez. Like, got a 60,000 score, 50,000, 40,000, stuff like that. So I played Jeopardy. Then I played a game called Truck Racer or Truck Racers. Very, very bad game, but it had an easy uh, trophy platinum thing. Though there are online trophies, so I probably won't go back to it. I could pick up, like, 12 trophies into that. Uh, then I loaded up Batman Arkham Origins for a little bit, which I think I will be playing through uh, while I have the subscription. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't think I'll be going back to play it on my PS3. Now, using now and being able to use the PS4 controller and whatnot. And yeah. since the service is running well, I'm like, you know what? Fuck it. I can play it here. Technically, I'm playing it on the PS4. <laughs> Yeah. So, and that was running great as well. No, like, lag or anything. So, quite happy with that. And then, since I had such good luck with Jeopardy, I decided to load up Wheel of Fortune. And I got about 16 trophies into that, I do believe. Wow. So, at the end of the night, I had, like, 44 trophies within three hours. <laughs> and the this final, guy. the final game, and this is the best one. Believe me, this is the best one. I have no shame when it comes to playing games and getting easy Platinums. I have played the Terminator Salvation game on PS4. I have played some really, really bad games. I was looking through the games they had and comparing trophy guides and seeing what I could get. This game has a 7-12 to 12 hour Platinum time to earn the Platinum. So I decided to load it up. And that, folks, is Barbie and her sister's Puppy Rescue. <laughs> I have no shame whatsoever. But, oh my god, I'm going to tear my uh, hair out by the end of playing this game. It is so goddamn repetitive. and Just like the faces of the goddamn dogs in the game, it's like they are like suffering internally. You look at their eyes, they're like, kill me now. <laughs> I'm surprised this is even on the surface, to be honest. There's a few more on there as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm playing for that. I'm definitely going to get the Platinum. I'm 10 trophies away at this point. There's only like 23, I believe. But uh, yeah, no shame. I, I, I'm kind of disappointed. I can't stream it as well, but I guess like the bandwidth that's used, uh, you really can't do it without mm -hmm. suffering gameplay. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what I've been playing thus far. 
Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, that pretty much does it for the Ben playing section. So, Izzy, it's time to dive into that pre-E3 news. Why don't you kick us off with the first batch that came out? So this is interesting. Um, I'm not sure if this was released early intentionally be- or as a reaction to it leaking. Mm-hmm. And that is Injustice 2. It, at first it leaked, I think, through a GameStop poster or flyer or something of that nature. <laughs> yeah. It was pretty funny because Ed Boon posted like a funny message on, on Twitter about it where he, he said, like, who to invite to, like, uh, Christmas party or birthday party or something. He had GameStop mm-hmm. scratched off the list. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it leaked and it's coming to PS4, Xbox One, uh, PC also, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I don't. I'm not sure if that's confirmed or not, but I know for sure PS4 and, and Xbox One in 2017. So uh, mm-hmm. the uh, reveal trailer came out. Uh, it's kind of interesting. Um, it's just basically all the DC superheroes fighting each other. But there's no context to it, so yeah. it, we don't it's really know. It's definitely a teaser trailer. Yeah, we don't know for sure. It looks kind of like a teaser slash concept trailer in terms of what like the characters are gonna look like and all that. But uh, mm-hmm. I enjoyed the the original Injustice when I played it on PS3. I thought it was a good game. Had a good uh, story mode, a fun you know fighting game. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll probably check this out when it comes out eventually. Yep. Um, I, I like the idea of their um, upgradable characters with different equipment and whatnot. Yeah, with different bringing suits. Bringing to the RPG so. element. Mm-hmm. So I'm interested to see what the actual game looks like. Like when they show gameplay footage and they talk about, you know, the actual mechanics of upgrading your characters, whatever the case may be, uh, what the story is going to be like, if it's going to be a direct continuation of the first game where... Superman was like the main villain Mm -hmm. um, or if they're just going to do something different Uh, when I first saw like that screen shot of uh, Batman I thought they were going to do like the Green Lantern like Blackest Night because it looked like that version of Batman from Blackest Night from the comics Uh, that's what I thought they were going to do but not everybody else looks like that in the trailer so Mm -hmm. we'll see but um, I'm interested to see more I don't know if at E3 we'll see more or this is as much as we'll get for like the next upcoming months yeah alright the next batch of news is something that when it was announced I was like man I should have made that E3 prediction because it Mm would have made so much sense because come September 6th welcome back commander XCOM 2 is deploying on PS4 and Xbox One, finally! Which means I can get back into the game since I was unable to play it on PC and goddamn September is becoming more and more expensive for me by the day. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not too surprised about this. I, I think we talked about it at some point that we, we thought a console launch was inevitable. Yeah. You know, we just didn't think the... it was going to be this soon. Yeah, I didn't know if it was going to be, like, this calendar year, because that just came out earlier this year. Mm-hmm. I thought I was going to give it maybe a year or so, but uh, it's cool that it's coming out on uh, PS4, Xbox yeah. One. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm definitely excited, which means now I can play it, and, hey, it can probably show up on my Games of the Year list. Look out, Uncharted 4. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, let's move on to the next yep. one here. This one's so... I'm still confused about it, even <laughs> after reading the description on the e- PlayStation blog. Even the blog. fans are confused about it. So this is Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8 Final Chapter Pro... This is the real name? <laughs> yep. Oh, man, this is... I I thought it was just Kingdom Hearts HD 2.8, not the Final Chapter Pro... Whatever. Welcome this is to coming the naming out. structure of Kingdom Hearts. <laughs> This is coming out in December 2016 on PS4. Um, has Xbox One been confirmed yet? Because uh, I know I think this is PS4 exclusive. Okay, it's kind of weird. You would think they would bring it to both since um, the new one's coming out on both platforms, Kingdom yeah. Hearts 3. But uh, yeah, this is one of those HD uh, remasters. This time it includes Birth by Sleep. A portion actually, of that game, but it's, it's kind of a, like a side game. Yeah, it's, it's technically a sequel to Birth by Sleep. And they're also including Dream Drop Distance, portion of that. I'm not sure if it's just the cutscenes like they did with the DS versions in the previous. 
It's just confusing. Uh, so, uh, I believe Dream Drop Distance is the full game. Uh, okay. The other part, uh, what the hell is it? Kingdom Hearts Chi, black mm-hmm. back cover. That's the uh, cutscene one, I do believe. Just, just stop it, Square. <laughs> just release Kingdom Hearts one, two, on PS4. Mm-hmm. That's all we want. Forget yeah. about all the side games. Like, just give us Kingdom Hearts one and two, HD on PS4, mm-hmm. and I'll, I'll even buy it. I don't want all this side <laughs> stuff. Stop it. Like, well, it, I mean, I'm surprised they just haven't released the two remasters that they did on PS3 yeah. on PS4, which Why did not? include a bunch of like side stuff. Yeah, they could do that too, but I'm not going to play those side games, but I don't know. I might just wait till Kingdom Hearts 3 and then hop in with that one, but mm-hmm. this these naming conventions, oh, we'll get into it later with another remaster, but these names, yeah. geez, <laughs> what are they thinking? All right. Uh, our next batch of news made me cry a little bit because I got to wait a bit longer, and it kind of fucked up my fantasy draft as well. Persona 5. Well, take your heart on Valentine's Day 2017. That's right. Persona 5 has its official release date of February 14th, 2017. And it's coming to PS4 and PS3 in the West. And there's one sweet, sweet Take Your Heart Premium Edition coming, which includes a soundtrack CD, a 4-inch Morgana plush, which is the uh, cat character in the game, a 64-page hardcover art book, a steel book, and a school bag, a replica of which they have in the game. I am so goddamn excited for this. And you pre-ordered that, right? Oh, yes. <laughs> as soon as it became available, I was into uh, EV games and pre-ordered it. It's only 109 yeah. bucks here in Canada, so... Yeah. I think it's 89 here, something uh, like that. Yeah, it is. But, yeah, um... I'll leave that for the fans of the series. I'll, I'll probably pick <laughs> up like the main game, especially now that it's moved out of this year. Yeah, I was kind of scared that it would be close to Final Fantasy 15, mm-hmm. and that would be like yeah, two massive JRPGs. <laughs> so, uh, at least for us here in the states, they're not in the same uh, release window, mm-hmm. which is cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, it looks it looks fantastic. Like Persona's always had like that fantastic look, that very distinct anime look to it. So. I'm excited for it, and I, I, I like it, too, that they're for people who pre order they get the Steelbook version, yep. like, if you get, like, the first print run of it, basically, mm-hmm. which which looks really nice. Um, something that I'm not excited about <laughs> uh, is uh, Watch Dogs 2, which is coming uh, November 15th to PS4, Xbox One, and PC, and, yeah, it looks so generic. <laughs> and it's going to be downgraded and delayed for a year. <laughs> I I saw the trailer for this and I'm like, what are they trying to go for? Like, mm-hmm. the first game was, you know, more serious. This one yeah. still has some serious elements, but it looks like it's more, more colorful, more mm-hmm. goofy. If that's the term that I could use, it it seems more, like. It seems more Saints Row to me than, like, the original felt, as mm-hmm. far as I know. It's not going overboard ridiculous, like, superhuman powers and stuff like that. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. It. I'm not interested in it. Like, I mm-hmm. played the first game. I thought it was very mediocre. I played, you know, a few hours. Aiden Pierce was, like, one of the worst protagonists ever. Like, he was just terrible. Um, and... It just it just wasn't very good, like in my opinion, the original Watch Dogs. This one looks like an improvement, but hey, we saw those trailers before the original yeah. Watch Dogs and uh, fool me once, <laughs> you know, fool me twice. Like, no, the, Ubisoft, you're not yeah. getting me excited for this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I watched the trailer. Looks cool in my opinion, but it's definitely one I'm going to be waiting on. I like the fact that they're setting it in San Francisco, though. I think that's an excellent choice for a, a city to explore. Yeah. And if they don't have a kind of funny reference into it, shame, shame on yeah. you, Ubisoft. I'm I'm sure there'll be tons of references because everybody in like the gaming industry is within that area, within the mm-hmm. Bay Area. Yep. Um, <laughs> you can go to IGN and hack them. <laughs> <laughs> that would be funny. 
Uh, <laughs> well, uh, moving on to the next news story. Once again, my uh, my uh, fantasy draft gets a kick in the nuts because Horizon Zero Dawn got a brand new trailer and a brand new release date of February 2017. That's right. We're going to have to wait until I'm stalling time so I can find the exact release date. Uh, February 28th, which kind of hurts because it's 14 days after Persona 5. God damn it, February's already expensive. Yeah, especially if we're going to get both collector's editions. Well, <laughs> if Sony's any... Uh, well, they if, re- track if they record, release it in Canada. Yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Because the goddamn, that statue looks so goddamn nice for a Horizon. Yeah, it does look really nice. And the new trailer was pretty damn cool, too. We got to see more of the story, uh, learn a bit more about the main character. Yeah, it's it's still really interesting. It's still one of my most anticipated games. Uh, it's kind of strange that they dropped this trailer and this information before E3. You thought they mm-hmm. would have shown this. You know, they would have showed us a trailer and then at the end been like, boom, new release date, February. Yeah. Whatever. Well, maybe they wanted to get it out of the way, you know? Yeah, like, may- maybe they didn't want to get booze in the crowd and be like, oh, it's not coming, you know, this year, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Yeah. I don't know. It's kind of kind of strange to roll out for for this game, but uh, not surprising that it got pushed out, especially with a game as ambitious as this open-world action RPG mm-hmm. um, by Guerrilla. They haven't done anything like this. All the other stuff they've done have, have been, you know, linear first-person shooters, so... They could take their time with it. There's plenty of stuff to play in the meantime. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, moving on to another remaster, and that's for Final Fantasy XII, titled Final Fantasy XII The Zodiac Age, which is coming to PS4 in 2017. And I know a lot of people have been asking for a remaster of Final Fantasy XII, yeah. which originally came out on the PS2 way back in the day. Um... I actually never played this one. Like, I've played some, you know, like, 10, 10, 2, mm-hmm. 11. I never played 12, like, any of it at all. Um, wow. It looks nice, but mm-hmm. <laughs> you know how I am with RPGs. But <laughs> I'm, I'm happy the fans are are finally getting a remaster of this. But uh, we're getting a lot of remasters. <laughs> a, yeah, lot of, a lot of remasters coming out. And they, well, they keep selling, so. Yeah, might as well. I mean, I, I'm happy about this, and I'll definitely be picking it up. It wouldn't surprise me if this gets released and, say, we get the demo for Final Fantasy VII Remake onto it. Mm-hmm. Like, that that's probably an early prediction there for me on that one. Yeah, like they, they would uh, type zero for the Final Fantasy XV demo. Yeah, exactly. Which was the reason I bought type zero and traded it in promptly after <laughs> getting the code for the demo. <laughs> They should have just sold me the demo. I would have paid 20 bucks for the demo, but... Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm looking forward to this. I enjoyed 12 right up until the ending. I, I think I tweeted it when I saw the news, like, I can't wait to play through Final Fantasy 12 again and be disappointed all over again by the ending. Because the ending of that game, unfortunately, was very much rushed and kind of didn't make sense given mm-hmm. what had been leading up until the final moments of the game. But, that being said, I love the combat in Final Fantasy XII. The last good combat in a Final Fantasy series, in my opinion. Uh, It was moving away from the turn-based battle system, but kind of still was. Uh, And you could, like, set perimeters for your other characters to do. Like, they go below so much health, they would heal you, that kind of deal. So I, I really enjoyed the battle system and the uh, upgrade system as well in the game. So, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it. Uh, next bit of news here. The last from the PlayStation blog. Yes. We got some news on Ukulele, a.k.a. Banjo-Kazooie 3, because Microsoft yeah. is stupid. <laughs> uh, and it's going to be released on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, PC, etc., etc., in quarter one of 2017. So... Uh, again, the first half of the, or the first yeah. quarter of 2017 is going to be extremely packed full of stuff. And, and uh, another delay because this was supposed to hit in October, I believe. Yep. Yep. I I kind of almost forgot. I, I have the PC version of this because I 
back the campaign. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I'll probably pick it up on PS4 as well, though, just to support them even further. But yeah, I, I'm excited for this, and the new trailer they showed was really, really cool. Yeah, I loved it. It is it is Banjo Kazooie three. Like, oh yeah, <laughs> that's what it is with the character swapped. You know that that's what it is. Like everything about it, the design of the worlds, uh, mm-hmm. the collectibles, even the chatter between the characters, the way they speak. Like <laughs> at the end, a little uh, you know. <laughs> funny moment at the end and, and they're like oh like we wouldn't trust these these guys because next thing you know it will be in in like vehicles or cars or something that, <laughs> that they say like you know kind of a shot at banjo kazooie nuts and bolts mm-hmm. so uh yep. yeah it's, I, it's i like the fact too they confirm oh and a whole load of word puns yeah it's it's rare this is what it is yep. it's it's old school rare um platonic games which is basically old school rare like all the people there Mm -hmm. the majority of the staff is from rare yeah um it it looks fantastic this is a day one purchase for me like it looks so fun it's like right up my alley a 3d -hmm. platformer super colorful i hope this does really well um it looks like it's going to because it just looks like there's nothing really like it out there besides like the ratchet games because if it's not like Ratchet and Clank, which just came back, or something from Nintendo like a Mario game, they they're really not a lot of 3D platformers. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of 2D platformers nowadays. Like we got a ton yeah. with all these indie games, mm-hmm. but 3D is not something we see very no. often. So uh, yeah, it's really cool to see a bit of a of a resurgence, and I hope it does well so that the genre can come back in a big way. Yeah. We'll see uh, Crash Bandicoot at E3. <laughs> <laughs> Keep dreaming. So, Izzy. So, uh, next news? yeah, uh, I know this made you happy. Oh, um, very much so. Basically, Lego Dimensions, I'm going to call this like their season two, mm-hmm. uh, is going to introduce a gang load of new entertainment properties, oh, ranging yeah. from the Goonies to E.T to Sonic the Hedgehog, which was <laughs> freaking awesome for me. Uh, Sonic finally gets a good game. <laughs> in a while, yeah. And it's coming out on September 27th, 2016, and these are just going to be the actual play sets. So it's not a new game you have to purchase, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just basically going to be a, a download um, that's going to come with your LEGO Dimension play set that you currently have, and then you have to buy the characters to uh, unlock uh, excuse me, you have to buy the figures to unlock the characters in the game, mm-hmm. which, wow. I might have to buy this game just for for Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it I... makes sense, and this is what they were saying, like, right at the beginning, where it's like, yeah, you bought the base game. You won't have to buy another, like, base to play on. Like, mm-hmm. everything in the future will be playable on this one core base. So yeah. it's really cool of them to do that. That's pretty cool. I want to see how long this is really going to last because this is year two, maybe year three. I think that's that'll be when they wrap it up. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, especially with how the Toys of Life market is right now with Disney yeah. bowing out and Nintendo mm-hmm. hasn't been producing like new Amiibos. Like yeah, I know they the, put the, the Kirby ones today. The Kirby ones, the Splatoon sisters are coming out soon. We're still yeah. waiting on Bayonetta and Cloud. Yeah. So um. They haven't an- announced as many as I thought they would. Ma- well, Nintendo as a whole hasn't announced anything because mm-hmm. they're just being Nintendo. But <laughs> but yeah, it's some cool news. And uh, speaking of some cool news, yeah, but maybe not so cool. Mm-hmm. Is uh, uh, yeah, Andrew House confirmed today that the Neo is a real thing. That the upgraded PS4 will be happening at some point. And, uh, well, apparently not be showing up at E3 this year. Which is interesting, because everything pointed to them revealing it this year, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It just seemed like perfect timing. But we were talking about this before we started recording. Maybe they just want VR to come out and let that breathe Mm -hmm. and not hit people over the head with, you know, another device that they want you to purchase. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's cool that he acknowledged it. Um, 
kind of a bummer that they're not going to show it because it seems yeah. like Microsoft is going to show their Xbox Slim and their, you know, Xbox Scorpio. Mm-hmm. Or maybe they're saying this so they confuse the competition and then they still come out at E3. <laughs> and we saw that. We remember David Jaffe was like, no, Twisted Metal is not happening. And yeah. then he showed up on stage a few days later. So out, here's Crash Bandicoot on oh, the man. PlayStation Neo. <laughs> But, uh, Exclusive yeah, bundle. Uh, it does say in the article that uh, while House dodged questions about when Sony plans to release the new console and how much it'll cost, which they did say that it will cost more than the standard PS4, yeah. but will live alongside of it, he did explain why it will not be at E3, and he says, We want to ensure we have a full range of the best experiences on the new system that we can showcase in their entirety. Yep. Which... Maybe like come Next PlayStation year. experience in December. <laughs> yeah, it, it seems like they're talking about Horizon and God of War, like mm. games that would you know, Horizon's already confirmed Milk for next brain. year. But God of War, <laughs> like we were talking about before the show, it's always released in March. Mm-hmm. Um, the main God of War game, so yeah, it just doesn't make sense for them not to do that. <laughs> Um, and it's always been like a powerhouse, you know, showcase for the system. So maybe it hits alongside Horizon. Maybe that's why Horizon got delayed to have a little more oomph in it with the quote unquote Neo version of the game. Um, I'm thinking they're going to drop the price of the PS4 to $299 and then the new one's going to cost $399. Mm-hmm. That's what I think for the PS4K. And we were also talking about. Um, that I came to the realization, like I already did on this show once before, where I convinced myself I was going to buy one regardless because I always buy the second versions of the <laughs> systems, like the slimmer models, or whatever. Um, and I was talking to you about uh, 4K Blu ray players because I just got a 4K TV and 4K Blu ray players, I was looking them up and I didn't think they were very expensive and they are. They're still like 400 to $500. Mm-hmm. So think of the situation with the ps2 that it was a dvd player for a lot of people same thing with ps3 a blu-ray player for a lot of people um it, it's just very smart business wise for sony to get out ahead of this stuff because the 4k content is going to start to get really catching traction which i've seen they they release deadpool like on 4k blu-ray um there's other movies coming out that they're going to release on 4k blu-ray um you know, streaming services like Netflix offer some content in 4K now. So it looks like the ball's rolling at this moment. So it just seems smart for Sony to get out on this. Be like, hey, we are the cheapest version. Maybe not the cheapest version, but hey, you get a console with it. Like you get a Blu-ray player, but you get a lot more content with it. You get a game system. You get access to PlayStation VR. So um, I'm pretty positive the PlayStation 4K is going to be a success just from from that standpoint because i never thought of that aspect of how much is an actual 4k blu-ray player and they are very expensive so mm-hmm. yeah yeah it will make sense that's for sure but hey without it being there maybe we'll get to see some more cool games this year yeah i'm interested if, if it's not there i thought that was going to be a big portion of their conference mm-hmm. We're probably going to see a lot of VR stuff, though. So. Yeah. It's interesting. What They could hit this, like, out the park and, like, really surprise us, or it could be, you know, mediocre, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> especially after last year. I know people's expectations are kind of unrealistic at this point after last year with The Last Guardian, yeah. Final Fantasy VII Remake, Shenmue Three, like... It, it's it's going to be a hard E3 to yeah, top, it's, yeah. It's like they have to hit with, like, Crash Bandicoot and, like, the agent from Rockstar and, like, mm-hmm. you know, crazy stuff. Yeah. Half-Life 3. crabs. <laughs> Cause her eye on stage. <laughs> I'd love to have it just for that stupid uh, prediction that I did to come true. <laughs> and Ridge Racer. I want that to happen. Ridge Racer VR. But, um... <laughs> It'll be. It, I'm really interested. We're only a few days away to see how they they really structure this conference and how they mm-hmm. they execute 
Yeah. I'm interested yeah. to see how, how Microsoft does too, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Nintendo's like, eh, we're Nintendo, we don't care <laughs> anymore. Yeah. But uh, at least Microsoft's trying to compete, and we'll mm-hmm. see if they show the Scorpio now yeah. that they're not showing the Neo. It's interesting. It's an interesting time. It's mm-hmm. it's interesting yet frustrating at the same time because, uh, like, I, I've been on the fence about <laughs> some <laughs> Xbox One again. I, I'm not using it. Like, um, yeah, I, mm-hmm. I don't know. We'll, we'll see after this E3 if I feel the same way or they convince me to keep the platform. Maybe they don't convince me because there's going to be a slimmer, thinner version, more powerful. Maybe I should just get rid of it and pick it up down the line. <laughs> pick up a, a Scorpio down the line. But yeah. we'll, we'll see what happens. Mm-hmm. Yep, and uh, that's probably a good time to, uh, to mention again that there won't be an episode going up on Monday morning as usual because we'll be doing a live show on Tuesday if everything goes to plan. Mm-hmm. Uh, possibly doing a live stream as well during the Sony press conference Monday night. Mm-hmm. So yeah, look forward to uh, two guys rambling on as uh, we watch the Sony press conference. Either Sony sinking to the ground or making us cry yet again, which... If they reveal Crash Bandicoot, we're, oh. we're probably going to see Izzy in tears. No, you're going to see... It's going to be like a Michael Huber moment. You'll, you'll see me, like, flip out. I'm going to grab my <laughs> plushie and hug him. I'm going to start yelling, like, Tim Gettys, we did it! I'm S- not sure Save the what, Bandicoot! <laughs> I'm not sure what they would have to do this year to... I don't know, Legend of Dragoon 2, maybe? Oh, yeah. They do that. I'll probably break down. <laughs> crash is the thing for me. If they if they show anything Crash, like a Crash remake, Crash collection, mm-hmm. Crash whatever the hell, <laughs> Crash action figure, anything Crash on the <laughs> stage, I'll flip out. But um, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I'm I'm oh, excited yeah. to see what they do. And there's a lot of stuff that like we don't know if it's gonna show up in like either Sony or Microsoft's press conference mm-hmm. that yeah. you can, you know, some Capcom stuff like Resident Evil, whatever, but yeah, I'm interested to see what happens. Mm-hmm. Ditto. And, uh, yeah, that's probably a good time to wrap up this little mini episode. Uh, so, yeah, I said everything I think I needed to say about what's coming up, what we're doing, and, yeah, so easy. Why don't you take us out before I say, and, yeah, once again. <laughs> One last thing, uh, my video for the PlayStation My Road to Greatness contest oh, yeah. finally we went up. That. So uh, I'll have you leave a link down below somewhere in the description, and people could go uh, check that out. So it's a short video; it's only uh, you know like three or four minutes, but um, it shows some of the highlights of them interviewing me and the event here in Orlando, Florida. So had a great time. I'm I'm happy it's finally out mm-hmm. after such a long time, but definitely go and check that out. Um, let us know in the comment section down below any of your thoughts on any of these new stories. Are you still hyped for E3, even with all these things leaking or being revealed before the show? Um, I'm, I'm still hyped, so <laughs> let us know in the comment section down below. For Lord X, I'm Izzy AK Israel Pacheco 89, and we are glitching out. Go pre order Persona 5 now!